Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the Zero K 2v2 Anniversary Tournament. We're going to be moving on to the quarterfinals as we have a match between Throne Tal, cor bottom corner, and North Chilean G and Rar, who don't have a team name, just North Chilean G and Rar. And at the same time, we also have Fat Man and Little Boy going against Langustine, which I believe already finished. Just hasn't updated yet. FFC versus Endgame Boss, and BM versus. Don't make me. It's like Gregorz Briskiskiewicz something, but it's like, I there's a English translation that I'll use if I have to actually put them in the team names. For those games, losers of those will be fighting people that lost in the previous match. One of which being FSP, actually. So we're moving on to that at some point later on, but yeah, for now we're going to be going to instead the game that is currently going on, which is throwing the towel versus NCG slash or North Chilean G and RAR. Just setting themselves up. Getting themselves going. We're going to be on Desert Cliffs. Not a map we've seen a whole lot of recently, but that's a pretty good map. I mean, I haven't seen a whole lot of it recently, but I kind of wish we had. Because it's... I mean, okay, it's a small map. It's probably not going to take that long to finish. But it'll be interesting. I don't know. I look forward to seeing how it gets played out. I feel like Nano Kid decided to go for a bot heavy strategy. And are we going for proxy? Are we going for proxy? North Chilean G, is that, is that the plan? I mean, these two teams are pretty evenly matched, so I'll be curious to see how this actually ends up playing around. Oh. Yeah, okay, so for those of you asking in the stream chat what's supposed to happen, the... I mean, granted, this is on, on delay, so it would be a little while to get to it. But, yeah, the... it's best of three. The tournament's best of three, it's not best of one. So, you play two rounds. Whoever lo loses, picks the next map out of the list of maps that's in the tournament... Parade, in the tournament bracket page. Or the tournament... not bracket page, the tournament forum post. Anyway, back to this match, though. We do have... Like I said, the... Throw on the towel is going to be going for a heavy bot strategy while NCG Rar are going for Cloaky Spider. And looks like mostly an aggressive strategy coming in from the bottom side. Because, I mean, why not? You know, come in, be aggressive, do a lot of damage. It's not like anything's going to get in your way that way. At least that seems to be the thinking. But. I'm curious if that's actually going to work out. We already, right now, have our Anarchist Commander decided to just walk right in. Not even be upgraded, just walk in. Go in with a standard laser and 3600 HP, which, granted, that is actually quite a bit of HP. But going to the standard laser, try its best, but it's not going to be able to do that well. The Glaive's coming in, flanking it perfectly. Anarchist Commander going down immediately. That is a great start for Nutshell and Gian Rar. Coming in immediately, or not even coming in, just, just defending themselves. Getting rid of one of their opponent's commanders. I throw in the towel, out of commander. North Chilean G and Mar just need to hold on, really. It's kind of all they need to do. Just hold on. Head going. They already have a con. Wow, the contra really in the back lines. Are they going to start building proxy expansions? Because that would be kind of amusing. Would be very surprising, but kind of amusing nonetheless. But no, it looks like it is going to just. Be exact what it looks like, and bear in mind, this commander can jump. North Chilean G, they still have their jump available, but at the same time, there's that ro there's the Ronin Rush coming in from Anarchid. Or at least trying to, but the counter is already in play. I mean, we already had the Recklesses, we already had Ronins being built up. So, despite the heavy rushes coming in here, it's not necessarily going to be enough. We already saw that this this team likes... I don't know, just this team, actually. It wasn't just these. Actually, wait, if North Chilean G... Oh, hang on a sec. Yeah, it occurred to me. Wait a sec. Wasn't Rar playing with Sparkles? Oh, no. Another one playing with Sparkles. What am I thinking? No. Sparkles isn't playing with Rar at all. Doesn't really matter. The point is, is that rushes like this are clearly going to be a thing. And I mean, Desert Cliffs, no surprise that this is a tiny map. It is going to support rushes like this quite well. So, yeah. I would expect as much. And that looks like it's probably going to be... Pretty, pretty quick setup. I mean, right now, Rar is the only one really left for North Chilean G and Rar. I don't expect we're going to be having a whole lot of real issues for for Throne Towel. I think 
I think they kind of got this. Not really to put, to put too fine a point on it. I just think throwing the towel is going to be having a bit of an easier time here than their opponents. Well, at any rate, certainly going to be trying. It's just... How is this going to work? I mean, the one thing going for them is that there's at least this Conjurer in the corner able to do something, but again, not a whole lot of economy. The only saving grace is that it's kind of even, and Rar's Commander is still alive. And actually, Rar's Commander doing a great job holding on. If a worker two gets built up, starts reclaiming a bunch of the stuff, or even just the commander starts reclaiming a bunch of the stuff, then there's actually a lot of room to get their economy back online for North Chilean G and Rar. But the problem, of course, is actually getting that back online, especially as RAR is burning a lot of the metal, so it's making it more difficult to actually get units, and as a result, making it more difficult to actually hold back what's happening. But at the same time, that's... That commander... That commander for Orphilius is pretty heavily threatened, and the Reckless is forcing everything back, forcing the rogues back, almost getting rid of the commander, one shot left, that's all it takes, and there it is, the shot straying past the stinger, taking care of the commander, that should limit that entire assault and the need. That's actually forcing the resign. Throw in the towel is going to be throwing in the towel, or at least Orphilius wants them to. Not sure if that's actually going to pan out, but I would not be surprised. And if that does happen, then at least they'll have lived up to their name. But my goodness, this game, this is hell of a start of this series. To come in here, blow up, and that's going to be it. So game one goes to North Chilean Gene Rar. Very convincing, very early win. I'm honestly extremely surprised at that. So already we're at 1-0, and oh, it looks like FSP just... I guess they forfeited. Okay. Didn't really notice that before. But yeah, it looks like we're going to be going on to... Game 2. Wow, that was... That was a game. That was a game that happened. I don't know why it was a game that happened. I'm not entirely sure how it was a game that happened. But I know that it was, indeed, a game that happened. It was an event that occurred in the past. And we can't change that. It's the wrong game. But we're having game two once they choose the map, because, like I said, Desert Cliffs, kind of small, encourage rushes, makes sense for the way that Anakin and Ophelia often like to play. But was still really surprising, all things considered. Like, why would you go for that? Of, of all things you can go for, like, I don't know, smaller map? Either way, we're going to Alien Desert next, and that's going to make a lot more sense, because, well, of course it will. Like, that's... That is when... I, that was a map I'd expect. A larger map, more metal, more room to maneuver, less room to really do a whole lot of sneaky rush play. Yeah, I like it. I, I t I'll take it. Makes sense to me. Like, that's the thing that I just wasn't really sure about with this whole thing. Is like, why are you going for such... I mean, I guess it makes sense to go for the rush. I guess the time... And also the tiny map was a bit random. Although I think there's a misinterpretation of the rules. As far as I can tell, the rules state that a team random... A team at random chooses a map. Not that the map itself is chosen at random. The map itself... The choice of the map seems to be something that's actually under the team's control. Just that who chooses the map first is picked at random. But people were okay with Desert Cliffs. I mean, evidently, they knew how to deal with it. So, yeah. <laughs> both sides knew what they wanted to do, and both sides did it. So, good job there with the execution of everything. Anyway, we're going to be moving on to Alien Desert once this gets going. And North Chilean G restarts. They, we have had some technical issues... But we'll get that sorted out. And I expect in this map we are going to see probably some slight aggression. I mean, Rar is the kind of player who always goes for commander-related things, so I expect that will be aggression on their part. I don't expect a huge amount because they haven't really gone for it super often, and it is 2v2, not 1v1. But at the same time, they might. I'm actually really curious if that's going to work out. So, what's happening? I 
All right, so an update though on FSP on the bracket is that FSP apparently big bag mechs dropped. They weren't available. So that's what happened. If big, so right, right now we might get a replacement, so FSP should be able to continue along. But that is going to be something to deal with between games, because right now we are getting into the actual match. And again, for those of you watching the tournament on here, it is best of three, so if you are playing and you have won or lost a single match, do play another one. Whoever lost picks the map. There's a list in the forum. Pick one of those maps and then work from there. That is that is how it goes. So if you do that, you'll be fine. If you don't do that, then you aren't... It's not going to work. And again, we be told to go play another round. So, yeah. Best of three. Whoever wins two, they take it. I know it's a little unusual because we've been largely doing Swiss tournaments for the last few months. But, yeah. It, like, Swiss best of one tournaments, I should say. But, yeah, this is a bit different. It's also why it's a little awkward for me to actually find which match to do. Because I need to find matches that are, you know, actually incomplete in order to do them. But either way, we are going to be getting into North Chilean G and are defending their victory. Defending them not dying. Defending their defense, really, when you think about it. It's effectively what happened here. They were doing a thing, and they got attacked, and they defended themselves, and then they defended having defended themselves. As they now need to defend the, their defense to win. Oh. Although, according to chat, though, Rar is actually planning on going aggressive. Like, planning on going probably for... I don't know, Ogre? I guess? Ogre Commander Rush? Seems like a likely thing. Same time, Anarchid and Orphelius going for light vehicles and shield bots. Orphelius very in the front with the shield bots. Anarchid, more in the back. Not surprising there. I mean, yeah, vehicles... Vehicles are a common thing in this map. Same time... North Chilean G and Rar, I don't know. Oh, hang on. Hovers, right. Okay, so it looks like we could be it could be Ripper, it could be Mace. Probably not gonna be Ogre, actually. I don't I just kinda figured Ogre would be a good choice, but I I'm not the one who goes for that. So yeah, I don't really go for commander rushes. So it's entirely up to Rar at this point, but North Chilean G getting the light vehicles out. Rar are still trying to figure out what the heck they want to build. And I can't say I blame them. This is a tough question. They do have to deal with the fact that their opponents are quite strong. And are probably going to be very aggressive. So, with that, getting into it, RAR still not decided. North Chilean G going for the light vehicles. Shields and light vehicles continue to be what's going on for Throw and Tell. So, Throw and Tell, and again, the early expansion too. And that's the thing here is that it is going to be aggressive. Oh, Shield! Okay, are we getting, like, Thug? Commander Rush? I'm confused. Well, Bandits at the beginning. So, both players going for a light vehicle shield. And it's worth noting, shields are very strong. Like, shields are basically meta right now. So, that is why we're seeing, seeing a lot of shield bots. They have, I mean, they're tough. Outlaws have been very strong recently, so people have been going for that because they got their range buffed a few patches ago. They got nerfed, but it still was buffed, so people are still thinking about shields as being a thing to go for. And felons are amazing against basically everything. Well, felons are amazing against air. And air switches are a super common part of the meta in general. And felons kind of counter that. So overall, shields have been an amazing factory for just generally reliable play. Which is unfortunate for me because I'm not a great shields player. But Rar's pretty good at that. So we'll go with that. And Orphelius is already getting their outlaw set up. Because, again, that's a huge part of Outlaw and Felon are the two major parts of that factory that make it work. And we already saw how the Outlaw, or the Felon, rather, was working out for Throw and Towel earlier when they were fighting against Cat Lady and Green Squig. But, of course, the question is, how is that going to work out here? Both players are going for shields. Or both teams have shield players. And right now, while their attrition advantage is in favor of Throw and Towel, it's not in favor by much. I'm not sure how much I'd say that this is the way that it's going to actually end up going. I think, ultimately, 
this is going to be fairly even. Well, at any rate, it's certainly going to be a difficult challenge to get through. I mean, remember, we've got to look at this stuff and think, okay, well, what exactly is going on with this match? I mean, already the center's been taken by throw and towel. They're not super far ahead in terms of economy, surprisingly, but they are still ahead by 5 metal per second. That's still something. And at the same time, I mean, we're seeing North Plan G try to expand a little bit, harassing a fair bit, too, at least slowing things down. And I like that. Very good kiting. Actually, getting rid of one of the bandits for basically free off of Orphelius. So I love the way RAR has been handling this micro-wise. But the problem is, macro-wise, there's not a whole lot going in favor of North Chilean G and RAR. I mean, they're trying to set up something, but it's really not much. So, it's I, I like it. I like how it's being aggressive. I like the fact that it's being set up. I just, it needs to have some value. And at this point, it doesn't feel like North Shore and G and RAR are getting a huge amount of value. They're getting some value. Actually, the commander's doing a great job just holding off a lot of units, but it could go down. Its jump is down. That is going to be North Shore and G losing their commander immediately. Ah, oh, three minutes in the game, North Shore already lost their commander, and at that point, there was already a disadvantage for North Shore and G and RAR when it came to their economy, so losing a commander is an even bigger blow. Thankfully, it, the reclaim is available, but unfortunately, that is still four metal per, or six metal per second along with eight or six? No, it's four and six. That's right. Commanders are four and six, and there's an extra two and two for the, each commander on an ally team. So, no, that's actually fine. That's not great, but it's four and six. And again, they were already behind. So now, basically, two more metal extractors, three more solar plants need to be taken by North Chilean G and RAR. If they don't have that, they are behind. Or not. No, or yes, or yes, that was a snitch. That was not anything there. So, yeah, no, this is... Not a good position to be in. Throw and towel definitely has the advantage. I mean, bear in mind, this would go to game three if throw and towel wins the game. Like, it's it isn't something that is just gonna go nowhere. This like this will go to a game three if they win. So Raw and Rich G have a bit of room if they screw up. It's not the worst thing in the world. That being said, it isn't going well for them either. Rich G about to lose this Mason. Unable to really micro it. I mean, we'll be able to micro it back anyway. There's no way for it to get away. Actually, is there even radar? No. There was no radar of that section, so there's no way to see that coming. Bit of a shame, too. However, RAR coming in with their commander again. RAR with the commander with the push. And that commander push should at least be able to do something. But the question, of course, is can it get through these outlaws? But the rogues, probably. Actually, if that works, that should be enough to help push past this. And if that opens things up in North Australian G and RAR, and start taking the north side of the map, start expanding to that, then there is some possibility for them to have the money needed to actually push in. But it feels like RAR is just trying to do this one push. Like, this is a RAR thing to do. You go in with the commander, you just try to do everything you can with your commander, destroy everything your opponent has, win on attrition that way, and then not even worry about it. But you don't even worry about the economy. You don't worry about the, the macro play at all. You only worry about whether or not you're going to be able to destroy your opponent. And that's exactly what RAR is trying to do. Now, I kind of wish North Slane G would come in here and would actually you know, build up something. Like, get some economy going. Like, extra economy going. I feel like this is going to be the end of this match. Is that RAR is going to try. RAR is going to push. RAR is going to end up failing. It'll be a valiant failure, but I don't see this working out just in the long haul. Because attrition-wise, Throw and Towel is winning. Throw and Towel is taking this and running with it. So I don't really see where this is going to go anywhere but badly. And like I said, it's a valiant effort. I just don't understand where that's possibly going to work out. I mean, like, as we can see here already, RAR is being forced to retreat. Their commander isn't really set up for this. I kind of wish they'd gone for a lightning gun, honestly. I get the point of the rockets, but the lightning gun would just push through all the shields way faster. I mean, I have one more upgrade coming in, which I think will be their D-gun upgrade, once we see that actually finish up. With 99%. Okay. What do they have? Two missile launchers. And a bunch of range boosters. Okay. Not bad. But even then, 
it's not great. And right now, North Australian G, they don't have a whole lot of workers either. There's so much reclaim available, too. So much work reclaim. That's 650 metal reclaim. They can turn that into a bunch of metal extractors. While their opponents are building loads of metal extractors already. Like, at this point, like, Throne and Towel has most of the map. So, what are you gonna do? The only thing I can think of that you can do is to try to get in with something that would actually uh, wipe out a shield bot, like Thunderbird, for instance. Being a really good example right there of what would actually get rid of the shield ball, no problem. But it's not being used, and that commander, as a result, is probably not going to be able to get through this. I mean, all the rogues are down. They're all disarmed, as the outlaws. Rogues finally getting their armaments back, but it's not going to be enough. That commander goes down. Rar loses their commander, and that should be it. We should be seeing North Australian G and Rar throw in the towel. Their entire game plan being torn to pieces. And that should be it. I guess they just work out better on smaller maps. I mean, granted, that kind of strategy certainly does. There was no macro being done at all. So no surprise, throw in towel does take this match. And that kind of a shame. I mean, I was hoping to see a little bit more from them than just that. But okay, sure. So yeah, throw in towel one and one. We're into game three, and I don't know. It's kind of a kind of a weird situation here. So anyway, with that, we're gonna be moving on to game three once that gets set up, because yeah, I don't know what they're gonna go for. I really don't know what we're going to see North Australian G and RAR go for. I, I, like, I'm really struggling because we saw a small map they nearly died. A large map, however, a highly aggressive strategy that didn't really work. I just don't know what else you do. I mean, the only thing I can think of would be going... For, like, let's, let's check the maps. Let's see what, what maps exist. I mean... They could... Uh, Alien Desert didn't really work. I mean, something like Badlands might work. That is on the list. I might actually do the trick as far as getting something set up for it, but I don't know. I feel like it wouldn't really help because, like, yeah, okay, it would be a bunch of hills they could micro over and put their commanders over, but that's something I feel like I feel as Nanakid would just be able to out expand them on again. Like, the maps available, I don't really see any way they're gonna win unless North Carolina G and RAR actually go for the expansion game, which I know RAR doesn't always go for. They often like going for the commanders and commander pushes. So, given that, yeah, Badlands does seem like a good option, considering the options available. Like, Badlands, Frozen Planet, Living Lands, Victoria Creator. A lot of us haven't seen in a long time, actually. Well, not Living Lands. Actually, Living Lands would be a really good option, come to think of it. Living Lands would be another good one. So, if it weren't for that, that would actually possibly work. I could see that being something they'd go that North Chilean G and Rar would go for as an option. But, again, it's one of those maps that I just... I could see it working, and I could see it working against them. Ah, <sighs> tough call. Really tough call. I mean, unless they went for something really, no, really big wouldn't make sense. Anything big, where's that alien desert? Rar and Northland aren't playing for big. So Rogue's River would be out. Victoria Crater would be out. Quicksilver might work, but I feel like just the way it's set up, because of all the cliffs, it probably won't be. So I don't expect that to be done. And Living Lands is indeed the one we're going to be playing on. That makes a lot of sense. So, Living Lands is our map. Not a bad pick. 
like I said, I totally see where that's coming from. It's going to be a, a small enough map that Rara and Orchelay and G can win off the commanders. They can make that work in their favor. So, there's going to be that. Otherwise, I'm not sure. Also, at the same time in the rounds, we do see Endgame Boss and... Okay, I gotta double check. There's actual English... It, they... Sorry, I know I try to pronounce everything well, but I'm not great at Polish. Gre Gregory Buzzy Beetle is apparently the actual translation of this. Honestly, I don't think it's actually translation. I think they're just doing something silly. But anyway, Gregory Buzzy Beetle. They're up against... They are going to be up against Endgame Boss in the semifinals, which I don't think we'll be able to get to. But, yeah, North Chilean G versus throwing the towel. Bottom corner. They're into their last match right now into Game 3 on Living Lands. Got to figure out what the heck we're going to do here. Sorry, I just... Total sidetrack. For some reason, the collision volume for the tree is decided to show up. I'm not sure how that happened. That's weird. Anyway. So yeah, we're going to be setting up Living Lands, of course. Kind of a smaller map when you have the expansions off to the side. Center, of course, is where you try to take control, so you can actually take control of the entire game. I feel like Nanarchy, like I said, I expect something a bit more rushy, but I don't know. But yeah, I expect more of a rushdown setup from them. Not that's going to work out, though. I'm not sure why I can't run commander name tags. I've been noticing that earlier. There haven't really been commander name tags. I kind of wish there had been. Well, at any rate. Getting into the match. We have Anakin Rafilis going for shield bots and jump bots. While at the same time, North Australian G and RAR going for cloakies and spider bots. So, interesting choice there. I don't know how that's going to really work out, but hey, give it a shot. See what happens. I mean, I want to say Cloakies and Spiderbots are going to work well, because I like both of those factories quite a bit. But I'm also kind of skeptical because, well, Cloakies and Spiderbots, not shield bots, And then jump bots also have, like, puppies and such that really get in the way, so... Uh, like, I don't want to sound skeptical, but I kind of am, to be perfectly honest. But I don't know, I mean, you know, give it a shot, see what happens. If it works, that'd be great. I'd, be, I'd, I'd like to see that. And we're already seeing sites coming in, all access and police scouting, but sites in particular for actual harassment. Which, that could at least be handy for scouting, possibly for harassment. We'll see what happens. The puppies might be a bit of an issue for that. But at the same time, the constable has been spotted. The flea up here does see the constable coming in. Scythe, however, not deciding to go for it, surprisingly enough. I kind of wish they had, but... No, North Chilean G not listening. Rar is like, Rar is screaming, and North Chilean G just wants to figure out there's something else from the looks of it. Or isn't it confident they can actually deal with this constable? Which I kind of can see where North Chilean G is coming from. Constables can jump, constables slow down everything. Scythe wouldn't be able to actually catch up and do some damage. However, North Chilean G might still have problems there. Oh, really? North Chilean G is worried about puppies? I guess. No, puppies are visible. I don't know why they'd be worried about puppies. Like, it's obvious whether or not a puppy is around a constable. It's... Yeah, they can see it coming. Although, at this point, this is opening things up. North Swain G does have that scythe distracting a lot of forces from from throwing towels, so it's possible that this scythe will actually... Oh, it does! Does! There we go! Does get some damage in. Gets rid of that constable. Does the job eventually. While at the same time distracting a bunch of these forces, they're not sure where the heck to even look. 
There's actually kind of clever little mind games coming in there from North Chilean G. It's pretty cool. And at the same time, we already have some glaives coming in around the other side. With, I mean, there's a giant opening here, so why not? The only downside to getting very close to these lotuses, and that is possibly going to be their death. Or at the very least, going to see what's happening. And I expect there's some radar, though. No, there isn't. There's no radar at all. There's no line of sight to actually see what was going on, but no radar. So there's at least that. But, unfortunately, puppies do eat glaives, so that's that's going to be it for that. But still, some nice mind games, even if it didn't actually amount to too much, ultimately. That being said, the scythe is still in the bottom right corner. Like this, this southeast section is still actually quite vulnerable, so I could see that working out. I actually kind of like that. I kind of agree with the way that was done. Curious how well it's going to actually work out in practice. But... I mean, if it does work out in practice, that'd be pretty cool. Of course, throw and towel, they're still managing to start to win that economy game. I and mean, they still have a couple more metal extractors. These corners have not been taken. I do not know why North Slane G and RAR do not expand. It's actually starting to bug me. Like, I know RAR likes using their commander, but come on. You could send out a worker over to the side and just build up some... I mean, I have the commander, obviously, but that's... That's North Slane G's commander. Where the heck's RAR's commander? Like, seriously, where's... Oh, there it is, up front. Yeah, like, I can kind of see it, but at the same time, it just... Why? Why go for it in such... I don't know, such a straightforward through the middle of the map way. I get it. I know I was mentioning before in my analysis before the game started that I figured Living Lands would be a good choice as far as having a map that really works out when it comes to actually getting the way Northland G and Raw want to play to work for them instead of against them. I just still think you got to expand. A lot. I know RAR doesn't like playing the economy. RAR doesn't like playing the game that's not build the commander up as big as possible and then push it down. I know that that's the game they want to play. And they just happen to be playing that inside of 0k. I get that. Like, I, I don't really have a problem with that, all things considered. But it is worth noting that 0k is not great at supporting that kind of gameplay. And I admire RAR for their resilience and skill in actually making it work as best as possible. But it's not really easily going to work. Ultimately, causing forest fires to destroy your opponent's units is kind of clever. But yeah, overall, like, this... I don't know. I, I just don't see it. I don't see how this works. North G at least able to get rid of some units of their over here, so that's good. Nice job with the Reavers to get rid of some of the puppies, get rid of these bandits. Threaten the commander a fair bit. But the moderator was already in position, so this isn't going to work out all that well. It means trying, but it's not enough. And that actually opens up the entire northwest side. And the southeast side, the scythe was killed a few minutes ago. So nothing's going to be stopping expansion over the southeast either. Again, throwing towel, winning on the expansion game. And I really don't understand. I mean, at this point, I guess it makes sense. But North Slane G and Rart, they could have built up over to the northwest a long time ago. And granted, they had the center, which is definitely more valuable in terms of individual metal extractors. So, makes sense. It's three per. But it only goes so far. While at the same time, it's a bit of an advantage to throw in towel. Although, to be fair, Northland G and RAR actually have a bit of an advantage when it comes to attrition. I mean, they still have, you know, 500 metal on attrition, or 300 metal on attrition now. It's actually getting less and less. And the metal extractor... Or metal advantage wasn't that bad until the metal extractors were destroyed, so there's a possibility. And a large part of it being Rar's commander, Rar's commander with double missile launchers, advanced target system, lots of range. Not sure if they have a D gun option available. We might find out once they upgrade to level 4. I kind of doubt it, but maybe. Maybe, I'd be curious. I just really don't know what they're going to do, though, because, I mean, this is still kind of a big deal. Like, this commander. What are your options, Commander? What are you going to do? How are you going to set this up? You have high power servos and more range. So more speed, more range. No D-guns, apparently. That's not Rar's thing. They want more missile launchers. Kind of makes sense. I mean, it actually works. I think it works fairly well in the jump bot shield match. But it's just dealing... Oh, no, shield... Not shield, sorry. Jump bots make sense. Shields, it doesn't because, again, shields are a thing. I kind of wish Rar would switch that off to lightning gun. Or maybe a lightning and rocket launcher or something like that. 
I guess I can understand because of the range. I just don't understand in terms of the actual damage output and what it does in practice. However, with the spider bots coming in there, that actually is kind of working out. Getting rid of a lot of the shields, basically eliminating most of what they can do. So I like that. That makes sense to me. And of course, it helps get rid of the moderators as well, on top of just the extra range. Although, to be fair, what is the current range of the... Ooh, nice, got rid of the commander. What is the current range of the moderators, though? The current range of the moderators is... Relatively speaking... No, oh, 15... I don't know. 420 compared to 600. So, okay. The commander does beat moderators. does beat his opponent's commander. Freelance's commander was destroyed for basically free, while at the same time, the Northwest is being taken. Now, all I want to see here is... Get one weaver over there, or any worker at all. Build some workers, for crying out loud. Why can't you guys build workers? Seriously, I don't get this. Like, this prediction, okay, fair enough, but it feels like that prediction has a lot to do with the fact that North LNG and RAR do not build, are, are not building workers. Not Don't build workers, but aren't. Relying entirely on their commander, which is why the Northwest hasn't been taken. Like, there's so much more economy that North LNG and RAR could have for the purpose of buffing up RAR's commander that they don't for want of a single worker. That's all they need is one worker. Now, granted, there's a lot of attrition, and another commander goes down. Anarchid loses their commander as well, so that could still be game. That actually could very well be game. That completely knocks out the ability for the center to be taken by throw and towel. A huge blow for North Chilean G and RAR could actually be enough. On top of destroying the Northwest expansion and the Southeast expansion, it might be fine. Even with everything, even with the fact that the game still could use a lot more expansions, it might be still working out. Living Lands is a small enough map that you can just push through. The commander is enough. I mean, it's getting a lot of reclaim in the center, push to the center, build up the center. And having destroyed both their opponent's commanders and basically their opponent's entire expansion set, I can't really argue in practice. It was a risky play, but it worked out so far. So far, Hopper being the operative word. Or operative phrase. Puppies are still going around to try to clear out this northwest section, try to open things up again. And Jax as well. Sooner or later, we will have some workers coming along the sides to help deal with it. Like, it's not going to be over that easily. Although, admittedly, these puppies were kind of destroyed for free, so okay, fair enough. But still, it's not going to be over that easily. I think that's something worth noting, is that it's there just isn't... Just not enough to go and say, oh, yeah, well, the commander's going to... No, 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 it's not just the commander. Like, you got to consider the fact that, yeah, the commander does their thing, but like, it's more than just that. The commander does their thing, but if anything, if all this stuff gets cleared out, or the workers come in with escorts, or just an outlaw coming in with a, con with a convict or a constable over to the northwest, that's going to be game. Why we're seeing a huge amount of development over in the center, I think is mainly just to try to stop everything coming in from North Chilean G and RAR. As RAR's commander, quite heavily upgraded. Missile launchers, auto repair. I mean, it's still just missile launcher commander it was the whole time. That's kind of threatening. However, we are finally seeing Weaver. We are finally seeing the expansion over the Northwest. Okay, this is North Chilean G and RAR actually get, securing this victory. Having built up the workers, having on the expansions up, I just realized more workers have been built, so I kind of missed that. There is... Not really a whole lot that Throw and Towel can do at this point. I mean, they have the workers up. They could reclaim a fair bit, rebuild some metal extractors. Kind of wish they would. I mean, they're reclaiming energy, at least. Which they also need, so fair enough. And the same time, Juggernaut? Really? At this? What? Okay. I mean, this far behind, I guess it's worth going for it. But a bit of a Hail Mary play on their part. I don't see Throw and Towel being able to turn that Juggernaut into a victory. Not with the sheer amount of units they have to go up against. I mean, it's a valiant effort. If they want to try to get rid of Rar's commander, it makes sense. Which is dangerously close to an imp. But, yeah, if they want to get rid of Rar's commander, I can see where they're coming from. I just... I'm a little bit doubtful. Actually, to be honest, why are they not going for a scuttle? If they want to get rid of Rar's commander, just go for the scuttle. That deals like 8,000 damage. Rar's commander only has 6,000 HP. So, a scuttle would work. If they want to just break that up. That being said, it's not like North Chilean G and Rar are wanting for units in general. They have a pretty good army on top of the commander. Like, this is the kind of play that you want to see, where stuff's actually working out. The only downside, of course, is that North Chilean G and Rar don't have any caretakers. Or, okay, they do now. They're getting more caretakers. But they didn't have caretakers for a while. They were accessing. Bit of an issue there. On top of that, we are seeing 
Racketeers coming in, starting to really slow things down, starting to get the commander disarmed. Forcing everyone out of forcing National Energy out of the center. And we're out of the center. That being a bit of a problem. North Shilling G, are they trying to go... I think they might be trying to go around the side here, get in here up to the main base. That's the only thing I can think of. But I don't know that I agree. I mean, they can certainly try. But again, I don't know that I agree. On the top of the Jacks coming in here, not a whole lot really d contesting the Jacks. Everything's scattering. Where's the even... Where's Rar's commander even? Over here. But yeah, these Jacks... The Jacks Firewalker... On top of the Thug Law Ball is pushing everything back, and not a whole lot North Shilling G and Rar have to actually deal with this. I mean, they have the Ronin, those are doing some work, although admittedly walking into fire is not conducive to long term survival. Ronin, you might want to not do that. But still, even with that, I mean, okay, I get, I get they have the Phantom, which is nice to have. But still, even with that, like, you need to have more things that are actually dealing some light, some. Kind of lightning damage, maybe get a Thunderbird. I realize they're kind of seen as broken, but it's it's a tournament. Like, do what you need to win. If that means using a Thunderbird, use a Thunderbird. Or otherwise getting a lot of lightning damage or disarm stun like disarm or EMP damage onto this ball. Even slow damage, although admittedly for spiders it's easier to get the lightning. But anything like that is going to do a lot of good. Or knights, just get a few knights. Get that set up. And there are imps, but Outlaws get rid of imps without issue. Uh, they're, they don't really do anything in practice. However, what this might actually turn around again. Salt, Glaives, Glaives and Ronin coming in to try to take out this south base, or rather, western base. Get rid of a bunch of constables as well. If those constables go down, that actually is going to be huge. The constables are... The only real work... Okay, the constables and convicts the only workers that really have, but the convicts are front line. At the very least... That relieves all the pressure off of the front lines for RAR. So RAR is able to get back going, get expansion going, start reclaiming a bit. But at least get them room to breathe. I don't know that I totally agree with the unit choices, though. Again, I would like to see Knights, maybe more Venom, something to stun out the Shield Ball. I think Knights would be the best option, just considering it is a very powerful Shield Ball. You want to have the HP. I mean, the Venom is trying, but there's only so much it can do. Like, it's, it's just one Venom... Going up against a large ball. Can't do that much. A few of them I suppose can do something. And like I said, I do like the fact that Venoms are being used. But Venoms are frail. That's why I'm saying use Knights. Knights have a lot more... Uh, knights have a lot more HP. Now I understand it can be difficult to remember sometimes. Just worth noting. Knights have a lot of HP. Actually really useful. I mean, it, you have to pull them in range. So definitely it's good to have the Ronin here. But the Ronin only do so much. On the other hand, Juggalot is in, and that is going to be a problem. That is actually going to be a really major problem. I thought the Juggalot wouldn't even get up in time to actually do anything, but no. Two minutes later, here it is. The Juggalot is ready and going. You're making this game three very interesting. But I do like the idea of just make more snipers. Y yeah, make, make snipers, make knights, make anything that's able to break through... Through and just stop this stuff from happening. Heck, Mega Thunderbird. Actually, kind of surprised now their player has gone for an air switch, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, like one Thunderbird, that would do the trick. The only thing I could think of that would stop it would be the Felon. And I mean, the Felon, okay, there's a lot of the Felon has going for it. But still, Thunderbird with a bunch of follow up forces, that would still be enough to wipe out basically everything. So, go for it. Give it a shot. See what happens. I, I can see that working out. As it stands, though, it, it doesn't seem particularly easy to get through. I, I, I like the snipers. Not sure I'm a big fan of all the rockets at this point. Again, makes sense for the shields, but the shields regenerate so quickly, I don't see how the rockets can push through it. Now, you can already see that the shields are pushing through super quickly. But then again, there's the Phantoms coming in. The Phantoms get rid of the Felon. The Felon will die. And if the Felon dies, then that is a huge amount of damage. That is everything that's needed. Unfortunately, the Phantoms did get spotted out by the Firewalkers. Because at this point, I would say throwing the towel has the unit counters they need. 
That's sort of the difficulty is that throwing the towel is basically everything they need to get rid of everything that North Chilean G and Ra have built up. Although, the Phantoms are doing a fine job getting rid of the Juggernaut. So, hey, worth a shot. It's a good, it's a good job there. Oh, Scythe, nicely done. Scythe in its very last moments, killing off the Juggernaut as it's pulled in before being torn to pieces in a wreck. That Scythe sacrifice should hopefully not be in vain, but that's entirely up to North Chilean G and Rar being able to hold off a much lower economy army. I mean, this is entirely a matter of this army value is very high, the shields are very hard to deal with, but North Chilean G and Rar have a stronger economy, have a stronger army, or at least have more attrition on them. The army value right now is dead even. That's actually really... I know, not even dead even. Throne Tal had a much stronger army beforehand, like 10,000 metal worth of army. Compared to like 7,000 for North Chilean G and Rar, which is surprising considering the attrition. Although it's also North Chilean G and Rar going in for this raid in the back with all of these glaives. To get rid of the Faraday, that should be it, but unfortunately the Faraday is not going down in time. The Outlaw is coming in, tearing everything apart. These glaives are not able to do any damage, and that wipes out the entire raid attempt, which was a huge part of North Chilean G and Rar's strategy going in. Because at this point, Throwing Towel is just not letting their army die. And they are losing a lot of their economy. They're losing their workers all over the place. But it's just a matter of... There's no way North Chilean Gene have really got to get rid of this. And that Faraday in the main base... I mean, that was a nice shot with the Glaives, but the Faraday stopped everything from happening. And on top of that, these Metalish Tragers being protected. I love that. The Flea able to come in here and destroy them, but still... That flea's gonna die. Like, it has to get too close to the metal extractor as a result. Goes down, but hey, at least the metal extractors aren't being allowed to stay up. And the terraform is still there, so it's not like, you know, Rar's commander couldn't build up another metal extractor in that spot. Of course, it's a question more of can these snipers do their job? Because again, North Chilean G and Rar have a smaller army. They've been growing that army. I mean, the. Throw and Towel has been losing their army over time. It's been gradually being reduced, being ripped apart, but it was always bigger this entire game. So North Chilean G and Rar have been playing catch-up from the very beginning, and they still haven't gotten rid of the shield ball. And, like, seriously, just build one Thunderbird, and it would go down. Maybe two, actually. Probably two, because the Felon's still a thing. But yeah, have that. Have the Fallout Forces, a bunch of Glaives or something, and then rip it to shreds. Or heck, even all the skirmishes that exist. If those shields go down, the skirmishes can do a lot of damage. Just getting rid of the shields has proven to be the problem. I mean, granted, the Recluses are doing a fine job getting rid of a lot of the shields, but the question is, can they get rid of all of the shields? And the answer clearly is no. You need lightning, you need slow, you need status damage because of the damage it deals to shields. Like, knights would be really handy. Or heck, even get it... Well, a Widow probably wouldn't work because it would be decloaked before it got in, but... Now, something that actually gets rid of shields very specifically would be a great option right now, and I feel like the, I feel like Roy North Chilean G are very, getting very tunnel visioned into this strategy of theirs of going mass sniper with a lot of rockets. Like, not a bad strategy when you're dealing with smaller shield balls, but shield balls of this size, it's like you have to get rid of the shield ball itself. Although, admittedly, the felon just got out of position, so maybe the snipe, the phantom could get in. One shot. Ah, come on, aim for that felon. They're not, on, they're not on a target. They're not, are not on an attack order against the felon. I don't know why they're not on an attack order against the felon. Just get rid of the felon. Like, if the felon's gone, then a lot of other units can come in close and not have to worry about it. Heck, if the felon's gone, you could go for a Thunderbird and, and destroy it completely. If you wanted to. I mean, again, it doesn't look like North Australian G and Rar want to. But if they could, it would deal a lot of damage. However, I just don't totally see it. Now, at the same time, another set of Glaives is coming in. Looks more so to be trying to get get rid of any of the reinforcements, getting rid of these thugs, getting the attacks, and yeah, I don't know. North Slane Gene Rar clearly not I mean as you can tell that it's communicating in chat for one thing, so they're not in voice comms. Which I'm not sure why. I mean maybe they don't have a microphone, because Discord voice comms are a thing. You can just use that. Like, Zero K's main chat server connects directly to Discord, so it's not like you can't. So you're probably on Discord. But yeah, you can see there's some communication issues going on there that is making it difficult to actually coordinate, which explains a fair amount, honestly. Kind of makes sense. Like, if they are having communication... If Rar and North Chilean G aren't really on the same page about how to use their units, it would make sense as to why attacks happen. Especially 
Glaive's going in. We already have the Faraday here. It's not like the Faraday's gone away. It hasn't been killed. So yeah, not the best approach. Not really the best option. So I totally agree with Rar here. Like, don't go in. Hold on. Wait until everything else is set up, and then maybe go in. Maybe. Even though I'm not totally sure I would agree with going in, I think Glaives wouldn't be able to do the trick. I do think this force should win, though. Like, the Ronin... The Ronin Sniper Force... I mean, really, just the Snipers alone should be able to get rid of it. If they just get rid of that Felon. Not even necessarily the Felon. Honestly, the amount of damage they could deal. But unfortunately, not really managing to do much. It's like... Oh, I see it's having the shields. Yeah, it gets through the first couple shields. But after that, it's... You know, sooner or later, gets blocked by shields. Ah, uh, yeah, it's... Like, it's rar... Man, Rar's got to be frustrated. Just looking at the way they're doing the chat, it's like... Because, yeah, I mean, they're not wrong. Keeping the sniper spread out is a good idea. It's just... Ah, oh, it's got to be frustrating. Like, watching all these snipers get possibly get threatened, possibly get killed. Basically, the main asset against this giant shield ball. I'm actually kind of surprised. North Chilean has got to be tired of something. North Chilean is generally a much stronger player. I don't, I'm having a hard time understanding exactly what's going on. But we are seeing Thunderbird come in here. Rar is going for it. But yeah, North Chilean G, I'm kind of surprised they are playing as recklessly as they are. I mean, it's fairly early in the tournament. I don't know how tired they would be, but I feel like they must be tired. Just because, like, why else would they be having these issues? Again, normally they're fairly strong and reasonably safe. So I'm having a hard time understanding where why North Chilean G is doing things like throwing a bunch of glaives into outlaws or throwing them into Faraday's when they know Faraday's are there. Or keeping the snipers in position. I, I'm kind of curious at North, what's up with North Chilean G. I know they're having some issues with the keybinds earlier. I don't think that's the problem. But maybe that threw them psychologically. I mean, that can be a real issue. Where trying to do stuff, trying to set up, and the game technical problems really distract you to the point that it becomes very difficult to actually play. But hey. Shots are coming in. That's it. That was the Thunderbird that was needed. That is going to be it. Anarchid and Orphelius throwing towel, throwing in the towel. Or at least Anarchid is throwing in the towel. Orphelius hasn't thrown in the towel yet. But there it is. Orphelius is done. That is it. Game three. After a hard-fought fight where North Chilean G and Rar just pushing as hard as they could against a much larger army, finally take it. And really, I'm actually kind of surprised the army was that large. You look at the metal use, it makes a lot of sense. Throw and Towel had a massive advantage to metal use right at the beginning. Because like I said, it took a while before NCG and Rar even made any workers. Honestly, it was kind of weird. By now they did, and then they were able to just grind away in order to get that win. But man, that was a hard-fought fight. And that is going to be it for the quarterfinals. So we're going to be moving on from there to the semifinals. It's going to be... I guess might as well do North Chilean Gene Rara versus Lagustine. That's JXG. And then after that will be finals. So yeah. The winner semifinals will be up next. So stay tuned.